Hi, everyone. It is the top of the hour here in New York City, 8 p.m. on the East Coast, 5 p.m. on the West Coast, and we are doing another, another town hall. If you have joined us over the last several days, you know what this is about. If you haven't, I'll give a moment for folks to get on, and then we will start again. Forty two thousand six hundred coronavirus cases in the United States. At least five hundred and forty one people have died. That is the latest news. So I'm just giving a little bit more time for people to join in and then we will begin. Okay, I welcome all of you in. This is our town hall that we've been doing for the last several nights. I call it a town hall. I call it a video journal. Um, I call it group therapy. <laughs> it's an opportunity for people really around the world to join in and talk about their new normal. And I'd like to start tonight's town hall with a COVID patient, um, a young woman here in New York City who was diagnosed with the virus. Uh, she is now at home. She is recovering. But she wrote an op-ed essentially telling people her age, listen, this is very real and it can happen to those of us. She's 26, year old, 26 years old. Her name is Fiona and I want to see if she is on here and ready to go. I don't see her yet. Fiona, leave a comment in the comment section if you are on. If you are on right now, Fiona, let me know. Just say, hi, it's me, Fiona, and I'll know that you're on. We're also going to be joined by two nurses uh, who work at a hospital in Colorado and are making masks. Um, they're doing it because they don't have enough of the N95 masks, and they're having to reuse those masks. So they, they've built a mask essentially to put on top of the N95. So you're gonna hear from those two nurses in a moment. Okay, Fiona is here. I think I just saw it. So let me go ahead and bring her in. <clears throat> Hi, David. Hello, Fiona. Tell everybody your last name. Hi, all. I'm Fiona Lowenstein, coming from New York City. New York City. She's a yoga teacher, um, and she is a COVID-19 survivor. You wrote an op-ed because you wanted people to take it seriously, especially people your age. What do you want everybody here to know? Um, I guess I want people my age to know that it can happen to us. We can get sick and we can get hospitalized. Um, that was my experience. And even, you know, if we do survive, there are a lot of issues that can happen financially from that. I'm a yoga teacher, right? I, I lack health insurance. I lack job security through my job. Um, so this is something we all got to take seriously. We got to stay home if we can, if we have that privilege, exercise it and cancel those plans. Even if it feels embarrassing, cancel those plans. Fiona wrote an op-ed in the New York Times that, I don't know, Fiona, would you say it was, tar it was targeted toward people your age? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, everyone needs to hear the message of staying home, right? And it's not just my generation um, that is kind of split on this issue. But being sick myself, I also felt just very isolated not knowing that there were other people my age who were experiencing this to the degree that I was. So, you know, I don't think I even would have gone to the hospital when I needed to had my partner and my parents not been texting me, checking in with my symptoms constantly and essentially forcing me to go at the at the request of my doctor um, because I was just in denial about about how serious it could get for someone my age. I'm healthy. I have no pre-existing conditions. I exercise six times a week. So I didn't think it could happen to me. So people want to know where you got it and what your symptoms were. Yeah, those are great questions. Um, I am pretty certain that I got it from a friend um, who came to my house and I watched her get sick on my couch. She was healthy when she arrived and I watched her start to feel ill and decide to go home. She had not been traveling internationally. We don't know where she got it from, um, but that's my best guess. And my symptoms were a fever on Friday night a cough on Saturday morning. And then Sunday, my fever went away and I thought I was feeling better. 
Um, and then I had vomiting Sunday night into Monday morning and the shortness of breath came all day Monday. Since then, it's been GI issues, stuffy nose, sore throat, coughing, sneezing, uh, sinus pain, uh, lack of sense of smell, which is something I'm still dealing with. So I would say almost every symptom in the book showed up at some point or another, and I'm on day 11, and I'm still nowhere near normal. Uh, listen, so she went, you did go to the hospital. Uh, you were tested. Uh, bizarrely, they lost your test and had to retest you. You tested positive. How long were you in the hospital? I went to the hospital on Monday evening, and I was released on Wednesday evening. So I spent two nights there. So you had a pretty quick downward spiral, but you also had a pretty quick rebound. Have you been retested to make sure you're negative? No, I have not. I'm waiting for, I'm staying home. I have not left my house since symptoms first started with other than to go to the hospital, which again, I was reluctant to do, um, but had to be done. I am waiting for the Department of Health to call me. They're supposed to call me by, I think, tomorrow morning. And if they don't, I get in touch with them. I schedule a test. I have my doubts about how easy this will be to do. And I've been updating people on via my Instagram page. I'll continue to update you guys on kind of what that process looks like, because I know a lot of us are confused about how long to isolate for, especially since I'm symptom-free in terms of fever, but I'm definitely still coughing up phlegm. And I have to think that I'm contagious. And... Look, it's it's really important to hear. I want you to tell people what you told me when we did the interview earlier. By the way, uh, Fiona's story will be featured tomorrow <clears throat> on CBS This Morning, so I encourage you all to tune in. Um, you know that there were a lot of people who sort of like, oh, yeah, I mean, whatever. I'm not going to catch it. I don't know. That's that. And, and you were kind of one of those people initially, right? Am I wrong? Yeah, no, you're totally right. I mean, I took it seriously just because I work in social justice and wellness. So I knew it was important in terms of me being an ally to others. Um, but yeah, I definitely saw myself like volunteering with some of these young people that are going around delivering food, you know, all of that stuff, um, social isolating, socially isolating for others benefits. And even when I became sick, again, I was very reluctant to go to the hospital because I just didn't fully believe that I had it, and I also didn't fully believe that it was actually as dangerous as it ended up being. I think I went at the last possible moment. I think if I hadn't gotten that, I would have had to call an ambulance. From the moment your friends started getting sick, when did you start getting sick? Uh, I watched her get sick on Tuesday night on my couch. She left immediately, and then I got sick on Friday night. So it was a matter of, you know, three to four days. And, and for everybody watching, the medical experts have told us people like Fiona may still be shedding the virus, right? So she's feeling better, but she could still be contagious, which is why a 14-day quarantine would probably be the best thing to do. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I am staying isolated until I can test negative at this point. And obviously, testing negative means most likely leaving my house, but I'll have the mask and gloves whenever I have to do that. Um, and I'll tell you that also I feel better, but there are definitely still symptoms happening. I mean, GI symptoms, exhaustion, again, the coughing up of phlegm, the loss of smell. So it's going to be a while before I'm back to normal. And it's going to be a while before we have some conclusive data from around the world to understand how weeks and months after people had the virus, what they continue to experience down the road, you know? So uh, if you guys want to follow Fiona, uh, may I give them your Instagram handle? Okay. Yeah, definitely. It is, it is F-I underscore Lowenstein, F-I underscore L-O-W-E-N-S-T-E-I-N. And Fiona, what you may want to do is when we get off of here, um, if you just type in the comment section, hi, it's Fiona, people can find you that way as well. Will do, David. Thank you. And I've been just trying to post as many details about my experience on Instagram because I know a lot of you have questions or experiencing this stuff yourself. So feel free to hit me up via DMs. I'm a little slow to respond right now because I'm trying to rest, but appreciate the support. Thank you. Last question. Someone asked, what did the hospital give you? They gave me oxygen and that was the only thing that they were able to give me, but it, it did the trick. Awesome. Fiona, I wish you the best. I thank you for sharing your story. You too. Thank you, David. Take care and take care, everyone out there watching. Thank you, Fiona. Okay, everyone. So Fiona is in New York City. Now I want to take you to Colorado. Uh, also tomorrow on CBS This Morning, you will hear from two nurses who are staff nurses at the hospital who are literally making their own masks. And so I want to bring them in now. Hi, ladies. Hi, Hi David. 
Okay, so tell every tell everyone who you are. I am Brady Hewer. I'm an operating room nurse at Valley View Hospital in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. And I'm Kristen Dirksen. I'm also an operating room nurse in Glenwood. Okay. All right. So why don't you show us the mask and tell us exactly uh, where the fabric comes from and how it works. Yeah. So this is the mask that we've actually produced. Um, it is made out of our blue surgical wrap that we normally wrap our instruments in um, for surgeries. And we did a lot of research in finding details about this product and we felt, felt like it was the most similar to the fabric that our masks are made out of now. So that's why we chose to utilize this material to make the mask for ourselves and to protect our coworkers and our patients um, in this crazy time. Explain, explain to them what it is about that material that enables it to be sanitized and is the reason why you believe it's actually worth it to use this. Yes. So this is not FDA approved. And like Kristen said, it is not the first intended use for this material. This material is the first um, surgical instrument sterile. This um, material is only available in hospitals that are surgery centers or have an operating room with a sterile processing department. This material activates in a sterile processing chamber and it closes the pores to create a barrier that closes, which will protect us from the droplet transmission that COVID, um, it will just protect our faces in lieu of the shortage of our personal protective so you put that mask on top of an FDA approved N95 mask. Correct, correct. Right? So you're doubling up. So they wear the mask that, you know, the CDC says you must, but then they put that on top. So it's another layer. Help everybody understand why this is needed. You're only being given one N95 mask a day. Is that correct? So we are given one N95 mask to use for the next upcoming weeks. Oh, um, weeks, not so day. Weeks. Not day, weeks. So as long as it's not soiled um, or falling apart, um, we'll be utilizing the same mask over and over again. So what we created was something to help extend the life of our N95 masks. And we'll cover the mask and then actually discard this if we come in contact with a COVID-positive patient. All right, so, and just so everybody knows, if they treat a COVID patient, that mask goes in the trash right away. But if they treat other patients who are not COVID positive, that mask, that N95 mask, which would be under this blue mask, could, and the idea is you continue to reuse it. Do me a favor, and what do you say to the medical providers? That, you know, I got, I got one medical provider who said to me, you know, David, this bandana making that people are doing is ridiculous. It's insulting to us. We would never use it. What do you What do you say to people like that who are medical providers? Well, that the bandana is CDC's next recommendation in lieu of appropriate um, FDA approved personal protective equipment. So we say bandana is not enough. You need something that is going to block your face from a from a patient's cough transmission transmitting droplets. Uh, particles onto our faces. Those droplet particles coming from patients will saturate that bandana and expose us to contact our face. This is a barrier that will not allow that um, droplet to hit our face. So we say in lieu of this situation, this is probably the next best defense or something similar like this material. This is a resource we have in our hospital. And if it can keep our, sterile, our instruments sterile, I believe it can protect our faces. How long, how often will you sterilize that blue mask? Okay, so we can only sterilize the product once. Oh. Uh, oh. And so we are making as many masks as we possibly can. Uh, we're, our goal is 10,000, and we're definitely well on our way there. So we are continuing to make masks. We have multiple um, employees from the hospital that helping us do this, cut and prep, and so even our plastic surgeon is helping out. So it's just a really, really cool thing, giving us a little bit of hope in just a crazy situation. Y'all are RNs, right? 
Yes. Correct. Did you ever think you'd find yourself in a situation where you'd be wearing, first of all, where you'd be told to just use an N95 mask for the foreseeable future and where you'd be making this? Never in my wildest dreams did I think I was going to make my own personal protective equipment. <laughs> no. Because our, there are standards that um, there's regulatory organizations out there that say that our um, any hospital, any um, clinic out there that there any job that the job is supposed to provide the appropriate protection to do your job in this situation every hospital every medical facility is in the same situation where we are running out of stock so we don't have the current we are extending our current fda approved mask to do to wear longer it's not the intended use it's not what they recommend but so we think that this mask will help use the FDA-approved mask longer for a long period of time. On behalf of everybody commenting, thank you for what y'all are doing. Thank, thank you, David. You. Thank you, everyone. And Fiona, hope, we hope you get better. Yeah, we, we all do. And just tell everybody one more time what the name of the hospital is and where it is in Colorado. Our hospital is Valley Hospital in Glenwood Springs, Colorado. And you can reach out to us um, on YouTube. Our um, we have a video, a YouTube video with a tutorial at the end to teach other healthcare providers how to make this mask with the material that they have in their hospital. And our YouTube video is Valley View Hospital Mass, plural. Valley View Hospital. Oh, that's good. That's good. Okay. Uh, well, thank you all for sharing this. And we'll, uh, we'll tell the story tomorrow on CBS This Morning. Thank you Wonderful. so much. Thank you so much. Take care. Be safe. Bye, everyone. Wasn't that, wasn't that amazing? So you hear from Fiona and you talk about, you know, her, the symptoms she had, which were pretty dramatic. Uh, she rebounded so quickly. She is so young, right? So you hear that story and you hear the advice she's giving people to take it seriously. And then you hear from these nurses. I, I, I you know, my mom's a nurse. And so I got a soft spot in my heart for nurses, but this is what it's come to. This is what it's come to. They're making their own masks. So uh, let's open up the conversation to other folks who are on here and want to weigh in. Let's see. Hoochie Poochie Club of New York City. My phone says waiting, waiting for the Hoochie Poochie Club of New York City. I think the Hoochie Poochie Club wants to join us to talk to us about um, the issue in New York City of what people are going through uh, with their dogs, right? There are so many dog owners in New York City, myself included. Sweet little Paddington is sleeping. He was hell on wheels uh, <laughs> today. So the Hoochie Poochie Club is normally a place, it's a doggy daycare where people can go. And so I actually wanted to hear from them as to what they're doing and what advice they have for pet owners uh, like myself who live in an apartment. It's cramped. It's, you know, eh, yeah. So anyway, Hoochie Poochie Club, uh, it says waiting, waiting. So maybe they're not by the phone. So Hoochie Poochie Club, next time you are by the phone, uh, let me know in the comment section. Okay, so the button has already stopped working. So anybody who has joined us for the town hall considerably knows there are two things we have to watch out for. The Instagram police who come after us after an hour and they cut it off. Um, and then the button, when the button stops working, I can't bring people in. So here's what we need to do. In the comments section below, I need you to say, David, I would like to come in and talk to you. So please do that so I can find out uh, who you are. Yeah, wait for the Hoochie Poochie Club to come in. I tried to have them join, but wasn't working. All right, so we're going to try the next person. Oh, Hoochie Poochie Club is there. Okay, so stand by. Hi. Hi, my name is Jorge Avila from Vega Baja, Puerto Rico. Jorge, okay, nice to meet you. What is your new normal? Well, um... It's, for me, it's normal to be in close water because I was in the military before, which is my new normal is that I'm carrying most of the order for my family because I'm the only one allowed outside. Um, given the situation, my brother got back from Spain about 10 days ago. 
I'm kind of nervous the first time. That's okay. That's okay. <laughs> take take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Um, You're good. Uh, what I've been seeing a lot in my area in the expressways is a lot of cops. They keep uh, stopping people, asking what they're doing, where they're going. <clears throat> but basically, that's my normal life. So you're the only one in your family that is going out. Yes, because I, I live under my parents, under okay. my mom and my brother. Okay. So you're going and out to get groceries and other stuff that are needed. Yes. What are you I just doing? got back. Um, back from where? Uh, from the from the uh, grocery store, like an hour ago or two. Okay. What are you doing? Do you do anything to decontaminate when you come back? Yes, we got laser spray. Okay. Um, every time we take clothes, we laser spray. We got hand wipes. Or like. I, I was ready. Um, military teach me to expect anything. So yeah, in that sense. And you know, you the medical experts have told us if you're going out and you're coming back in, in in contact with them, it's probably a good idea to maintain a six foot distance from them at all times. So yes. Even when you bring well, your you stuff to them. Do? Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Um. When we you uh, we usually do. Yeah. Is I left it on the porch. Like we got a mini. Uh, uh, yes, like a porch, and I leave it in there. They leave it around 12 minutes under the sun. Then they open, they grab it. Usually that's the most contact uh, I have with my mom and my brother for the last 11, 12 days since I'm back from North Carolina also. Wow, you're doing a great job. Thank you for coming in and joining us and telling us about what's going on in your in your area. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for bringing me in. You're have welcome. a great night. Have a good night. All right, so the Hoochie Poochie Club is here. Let's see if I can bring him in. Hi, David. Hi. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Hi, I'm Lauren Chapnick. I'm a small business owner in New York City. Uh, my business is the Hoochie Poochie Club, and we are a dog walking company. And we service the Upper West Side and the Upper East Sides of Manhattan. Tell us about your new normal as a business owner, given the situation. Well, it's been quite a roller coaster. Uh, over the past few weeks, as the situation's been developing so rapidly, we've seen, of course, a drastic decline in business, many cancellations, lots of our clients leaving the city or canceling because they simply don't want us to come into their home. Uh, but as of yesterday, we have been forced to shut down by the executive order. Uh, pet care is not an essential service, and um, so I employ 17 people, and now their livelihood is, is gone. And, uh, you know, we've been shut down until at least April 17th, and we don't really know when, when we will be able to reopen. We're just staying hopeful. Do you have any guidance for pet owners in the city and around who are dealing with a pet that, you know, needs to get out? And, you know, I got a puppy and if I don't throw the ball at the wall, he will eat me and everything in the house. Of course. Look, we love our pets. We want the best for them. This is a tough time. We have to strike a balance between staying safe and caring for our pets. And, you know, I think it's, up to each individual person how how they are going to do that. You know, I think you should still bring your dog outside and, and, and do the best you can to keep social distancing and keep your dog exercised. Um, it's a tough time right now. I mean, my company does a three hour outing. We do a three hour play group where we take your dog out and we get them as tired as possible. Uh, and unfortunately we're not able to do that right now. Um, so everybody's just, got to take it one day at a time and do the best we can. How are you doing? So we talked about per, per, uh, professionally, but how are you doing personally? Thank you for asking. Um, I'm hanging in there, you know, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time with my family, doing well, I'm staying in close contact with my with my team, trying to make sure everybody's doing okay. Um, I'm hanging in there. I'm doing okay. I, I can sense the sense of responsibility that you feel because you're not only wondering about yourself, but like you said, you're wondering about those people who depend on that paycheck from you. So 
it's got to compound the anxiety, I assume. Absolutely. I, I feel that, that weight on my shoulders. It's, it's an immense responsibility. I have, you know, like I said, that team of 17 that relies on me every week for a paycheck. And it's been, it's been absolutely devastating. And I'm not alone. I know I'm just one of thousands of business owners right now who are struggling, not only for themselves and their livelihoods, but for everybody who they, who they, who they employ. You're definitely not alone. Lauren, I thank you for joining us and, and telling us your story, uh, both as a business owner and a New Yorker. <laughs> thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. Have a wonderful night. You too. Bye-bye. Okay, so here we go. In the comments section below, uh, just say, David, please bring me in, or David, I would like to talk, or tell me a little bit about your story in the comments so that I know who you are and kind of uh, what you want to talk about, and that will help me in bringing you in. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit of news for those of you who are in Puerto Rico or watching what's happening in Puerto Rico. Uh, today, the Federal Aviation Administration uh, gave the governor of Puerto Rico, Wanda Vasquez, the approval to limit all commercial flights to fly into one airport, the San Juan uh, Airport, Luis Munoz Marin. And so effective tomorrow night at 11.59 p.m., anyone trying to go to Puerto Rico can only arrive at the San Juan Airport where your temperature will be taken. There's this infrared technology they have that kind of like looks at everybody through cameras and actually takes your temperature. You don't even know this is happening. And if your temperature is 100 point three or higher, an alarm goes off, an officer comes to talk to you, you are sidelined and then referred for medical treatment or quarantine. Also, the governor of Puerto Rico is now saying that anyone who arrives on the island, anyone has to quarantine for 14 days, either at their home or a hotel. My question was, how are you going to enforce that? Because there are tourists who are still sort of, you know, given the middle finger to the executive order in places like Rincon, the western side of the island. Um, and are disobeying the curfew that the governor has put into effect. So how do you enforce that? If you want more information about this, I would refer you to my Facebook account and Twitter account. I interviewed the head of the Port Authority in Puerto Rico um, about these new changes, what it means, what's happening to the air other airports like Aguadilla and Ponce, so you can go and check that out. Okay, continuing on. Daycares. I'd like to talk about daycare, so we'll get to you next. Hi, David. Hi there. What's your name? I will park for a moment. Thank you Please. for having me. You're my welcome. name is My name is Jose Gonzalez. Hello, Jose. Um, I work for a private lab on Houston, Texas. Okay. And my wife works for a different private lab here in Houston too. Okay. And we are from Puerto Rico originally. We came here after Hurricane Maria. And we are by ourselves. All, our complete family are in, back in Puerto Rico. And we have a baby. We have a two-year baby. And obviously, as everyone going out, I, I, I already parked, so I, okay. I'm safe Good. now. <laughs> Thank you. Thank um, you. Having a baby and being out from, you know, my, me, I, um, myself, I do, like, I go through hospitals and um, private clinics to grab specimens, and we're handling the, the COVID-19 specimens. Oh, you and, are. Oh. Yeah, I'm, I, 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 I am. Let me ask you about that. What protective measures are you taking? And the reason I ask is because I spoke to a lab owner, the okay. lady who owns the Toledo lab in Arecibo. Okay. And she said one thing that is keeping them very busy is just going around collecting samples because the government has asked them to do so because a lot of the employees don't feel comfortable even collecting the samples. Okay. So that makes me think, what are what precautions are you to, I mean, I don't want to be an alarmist. I mean, a sample is obviously in a thing. And there, may, <laughs> there may be no concern, but are you, what are you being told when it comes to handling COVID samples? Right. Well, um, for us, just, they just um, take, talk to us and say like, we, we need to take the, I mean, the, everybody precautions are taken, like watching the hands constantly, um, you know, for, but I mean, I see 
coworkers don't having the same precautions as I'm I'm doing because maybe they don't have in mind I can make one of my family members sick. For example, me and my wife are taking high like high precautions because we have a baby, right. and we're you know like we're thinking if one of the we, if one of us gets sick. We don't have like, uh, for example, my mom or her mom to take care of the baby because we're here by ourselves. Right. So for us has been like, um, I, I don't want to say afraid because we know like handling things and stuff. But as me, as a, a person living here in Houston, I'm afraid of the people that is not taking care of the things because you see people everywhere like normal. You know, and I know, I, I don't know, I, I think yesterday the governor says, like, um, he he will um, give the, like, for every county can do what they want. And here in Houston, and nothing happens yet. And we're like, you know, I don't know how to even think no, about. I, I, I hear you, and you're right. The governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, said that... Um, 200 of the 250 counties in Texas don't even have COVID cases. Here's the context to that. You right. can't say that because a lot of those a lot of those counties haven't tested, and even if they have tested, they haven't done a ton of testing. Exactly. So, so, so maybe you could say we don't know of any confirmed cases, but to say that there are none is just contextually uh, misleading, right? So exactly. uh, I know Dallas, for example declared essentially a they take care of yeah exactly but mm -hmm. has the has the mayor of houston not put in place a stay-at-home order nope and i live i i live in um harris that that is the highest cases right now in in, in houston that's the county with the highest case in harris county houston. right right yeah. isn't harris county but houston's in harris county right um harris county is in houston because houston have different um counties yeah no 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 Houston is inside. I think. Let me go Google it. Houston. Houston, Houston is, is inside. Really? Is it, yeah. Houston is a city within Harris County. Let me make sure. Oh, okay, okay. Let me let me let me just make sure. What county is Houston in? What county? because I know Harris. Harris yeah, is, yeah. It's, it's, in, it's in it's in Harris. It's in County. Harris. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's okay. That's okay. Um, yeah. You know, in Louisiana, we have parishes. So if you go to if you go to Louisiana, you're gonna to have to learn the parishes. That's where I'm from. By okay. The way, by the way, now that you're in Houston, you have to figure out a way to get to Louisiana and eat some good Cajun food. Okay, Cajun food. I never had that. You've never had oh gumbo nope. and crawfish etouffee. Nope. Well, you know that That's I would, good. you know that I would not mislead you, right? Okay. <laughs> go, go, go. No problem. I will go. Go try some. So <laughs> no, just, no just before just before I say good night. So just to be clear, you're collecting the samples, and then what? Are you involved in testing them, or are you just picking? No, them up? no. Um, I grab them from the clinicals, hospitals, and everywhere they get it from the people, and then I bring them to the lab. I My see. wife works in a different company, but she is the one that is. Um, on the lab, processing them to the technologist. I see. Yeah. Got it. Got it. Well, uh, you checked on your family in Puerto Rico. They're okay? Yeah, they're all okay. And, you know, like everyone, like everybody, just taking precautions, being... I was a little bit worried about the food thing, but now things are a little bit more clarified, like food uh, are not going to be... Um, no, no, no. Like... You know, that was, a, that was misleading and that was a rumor. And let's clear that up. Exactly. Cleared up exactly. For Puerto Rico is not running out of food. They're not supposed to run out of food. The ports are open. Remember, after Hurricane Maria, the ports were closed because there was debris and other stuff and they couldn't get ships in. The ports mm -hmm. are open. Cargo can come in and out. Exactly. <clears throat> Trucks are moving. Supermarkets will have food. So, you know, that was that was a rumor which got out of control. Yeah, so, I know. Um, Listen, I hope you and your wife and your baby have a wonderful <laughs> life as long as you are in the States. Do you want to go back to Puerto Rico one day? Yep. Good. Yeah, I want to go back. <laughs> nothing like the family. That's right. And nothing yep. like the island. Yep. <laughs> you know that. <laughs> I do. Nice, nice to meet you. You too. Me too. Thank you very much. Have a good night. Okay, you too. Okay.
My button still ain't working. My button still ain't working. <clears throat> oh, the button. Hello again. Hello again. You want to update us on something? Yeah, you told me to. I've been on here for like days. <laughs> Trying Day. to get your attention. Yeah. Trying, trying to get in? Yeah, but I like listening to it. It's interesting. There's nothing else to do, so I'm not so complaining. What, what, so, so you have not been on before? I was once. You were telling me to email the governor about how my call center was still open. Okay, and that okay. if they didn't email back to let you know, so I tried. <laughs> so what is your name? Jewel Elizabeth, but you can call Elizabeth, me Elizabeth, and where are you on the island of Puerto Rico? We're in Salinas right now, but I live in San Juan. All right, so I gave you an email address to the governor's office because you said your call center was not closing. You emailed them and you got nothing? Yeah. Okay, so then I'll take care of it. So then send me a direct <laughs> message and I'm going to take okay. that message. I need you to send me what you sent to them mm -hmm. and I'm going to send it to them and say what can, what can be done, what can you address. Now, now, what kind of call center do you work for? So we just, we're not even like, we work with people's social security benefits, but we're not in charge of it. We're just a prepaid debit card for people's social security benefits. I wonder though if that would be considered essential because you don't want people to lose those. I, I, I wonder if that's what they're going to tell me is that that is technically considered an uh, essential service. Card management though? Well, if, but let me ask you this, and I'm just devil's advocate. Yes. If the card management fails, goes through, is the is the recipient then potentially going to lose their Social Security benefit? No, they can still get their benefits on the card. They just wouldn't have access to a call center to say, hey, why did this payment go through or something? Like, But we're not a bank. So it's just very confusing why we're still open. And what, have your people who you work for given you any guidance as to whether you they definitely don't. are essential or not? No. No, they don't know because the company hasn't said anything to them. Mm. And, like, I'm, I'm pregnant, so I'm not going to go into work. I'm, like, refusing to go into work. Good. So you're not so – you're, so you're putting your foot down and you're not going. Hell no, I'm not going to work. It's like a Petri dish of just germs. And, you know, the one thing the CDC website says is – I mean, I'm not getting paid either. That sucks. But, like, it right. says um, don't stay in an area with recirculated air. Stay away from big groups. That's what a call center is. How long? <laughs> how eight hours? How closely do you uh, sit to people in the call center? There's like forty or fifty cubicles, and there's a person that I mean, there's no way for them to distance us. There's just too many cubicles. There's too many people, and they're not following. They're just not following the procedures that are in place on the website for the CDC to keep everybody safe. Right. And, and for everybody watching, that's really the one thing if you're going to point anybody to, if you're going to have a conversation with your boss and say, what yeah. the hell, that's really the thing to say, what the hell and point them to, right, is the yeah. CDC guidance, because states and the federal government are all operating off the CDC guidance. So you're doing the right thing. Send me the information. I can't promise you anything other than I okay. will... Uh, I, I, I will have it addressed to try and get an answer. You'll try. Okay? That's, That's all right. I need. But That's I had a right. question for you before you I'm listening. Take me up here. What do you, like, you, I saw you this morning. You were on the news this morning at 7. You were on last night. You were on in the morning with us. So do you sleep? Like, what? <laughs> How are you managing all of this? So it's a, it's, a, it's a fair question, and here's the answer. I was dog tired at 345 and I went to lay down and I took an hour nap and I'm not a big napper but I needed it I listen I'm a big believer in sleep uh, I've, I've listened too. to a lot of research on sleep so it's not that you know I just oh I love to sleep it like I've listened to a lot of research about the health benefits of sleep um, yeah. not to mention it makes my butt look better when I'm on television if I've had some sleep because ain't nobody <laughs> look pretty, ain't nobody look pretty when they go on having not gotten a lot of sleep but um, if I'm being honest with you, this is where I run into trouble because I have a hard time walking away. And it's exactly what happened during Hurricane Maria. I couldn't walk away. 
because for like people like listening to people talk or just no during to get Maria it? during Maria it was helping it was helping people who had like David I need this and this is happening and can you do I mean it was yeah. like the world was collapsing in this I feel I feel the need to give people a space on this platform right to to come in because yeah. people will write to me and say I can't watch the news anymore I've watched too much Netflix and it's depressing I, to be honest. I, right, and I can't them. stop watching these people's stories. And the reality is each of us have stories that when, like when you share your story, there are people who are writing on here um, that are taking them out of their own anxiety and grief yeah. and giving them some, no, but, but you see the beauty in that? Like if I'm sitting at home and I'm wallowing in something and I get lost in your story, it takes me away from my anxiety for a minute. And that's a yeah. that's a that's a good thing. And so I think this living journal slash town hall slash group therapy is so anyway, the whole point is Yeah. I, I I'm getting decent <laughs> sleep, but I could I could do better. Look, Paddington gets more sleep than me, let's put it that way. He does. He sleeps a lot during like all of your things, except when he's, he's chewing on he, stuff. <laughs> he sleeps a lot. But I'm managing, I would say, between six to eight hours. I always aim for eight, but I'm 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 yeah. you know, I'm kind of doing six right now. But I really thank you for that, that thoughtful question. Thank you. No problem. Thank well, you. thank you for having me on. I appreciate it. You, you go send me that, that message, including... Yeah, I'm going to send you the message. So just screen grab it so I can, I can show what email you sent it to, the date mm -hmm. you sent it to, and I'll, I'll get back to you. Just don't be offended if it's kind of aggressive because I'm pregnant and I'm like kind of oh. bitchy with people with my messages. Yeah, no, I... <laughs> Like, I feel very, well, because it's not just me I'm worried about, you know? I'm worried about, like, my coworkers that are still going yeah. in because they don't have a choice. Yeah, yeah. Like, people forget, you can be symptomless. Yeah, asymptomatic. <laughs> and spread it to someone like me. Asymptomatic. Pregnant. Listen, uh, thank you. It's, yeah. good to hear, it's good to hear from you again. Yeah, thank you. Have a good night. You too, love. Okay, so, again, in the comments section, Leave me a comment. Tell me what you would like to talk to, and I will bring you in. I will bring you in. Do, do, do. So, Lizbeth Music, I know you want to come in, uh, but I'm trying, and it doesn't give me the option. So, I don't know if your account is private or you may need to delete the app and upload it again. Some people have had to do that in order to get it to where I can actually bring you in. I've been in my house for nine days, but my husband has to work. He's a health care provider and they're putting lots of measures in place, but it's still scary. I'm still scared that he'll bring a pathogen home. I hear you loud and clear on that, loud and clear. Hello. Well, hello. So I read your message about your husband. What is your name and where are you in the world? Oh my God, he's not going to believe me that you picked me and he, <laughs> he went outside real quick. Um, <laughs> my name is Adriana and I, I live in Miami. Um, okay. My husband and I both from Puerto Rico. He um, works at a dental office. He's their um, operations manager there. Mm -hmm. And they've had to put in a lot of crazy measures in place, which are great. But I mean, it's still scary because for example, today they had somebody trying to go in and be seen that had like a 102 degree fever. Um, so that was scary. Um, but they've been shutting, like the doors are shut or closed and locked. You have to call in to get an appointment. Um, they're only seeing one patient at a time and they got to, you know, when you come in, they take your temperature. They ask you if you've been traveling, if you have any of the symptoms. Um, babe, I made it. Come, come, come meet David. <laughs> um, so I think he's shy. He's not going to come. So they, <laughs> <laughs> he was like, <laughs> um, so yeah, so they're doing, they're asking, they're screening the patients, but it's still scary because he's in an office with other people still. And what I was telling him was that, like, if the doctor or the assistant, um, the medical assistant, have been exposed, it doesn't matter how many measures they're taking. 
for patients, he's going to be exposed. And then the problem is him bringing it home to me. I've, I've been at home for the past nine days. I've been, you know, completely um, quarantined, but he hasn't. And it's like, you know, I tell him it's funny. I'm like, it's like an STD. You know, if you bring it home, <laughs> I'm going to get it. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> I know. Um, and then the, the thing is that I have, um, I was born with a, a syndrome called Marfan syndrome. Um, it's what a connective. What, what, what is that? Yeah, it's a connective tissue disorder. So it doesn't affect my immune system or anything like that. But um, it affects the connect, connective tissue that connects organs to each other. So for example, like that can make my lungs a little weaker or things like that. And sometimes, sometimes I have um, hard times catching my breath. Um, so that has been something that has been an, in our mind a lot. And he's, you know, he's really stressed out because he wants to protect me, you know, more than anything. Mm -hmm. um, and also the, I guess, the guilt that he feels. And I wish he would just come and speak for himself. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't know Babe's name, but have Babe come to the camera. Come on. Babe, babe. come to the camera. Then they don't know. He's coming. He's coming. If you fuss at him in Spanish, it might be more effective. I know. I'll answer. <laughs> <laughs> you know that one, David. You learned that one. <laughs> I'll <answer>. Dale. <laughs> so here he is. Hi. Hi there. What is your name? Um, Javier. Hello, Javier. So tell me what it's like for you. I mean, clearly you're dealing with patients. Your wife was saying this patient came with a, a temperature this morning. How are you feeling going into work? Well, I'm not going to lie. It's just, it's just a stressful situation um, to deal with this um, whole scenario, right? Um, but at the same time, it's it feels like a duty in a sense, right? Because right now we know for a fact that hospitals are being flooded with patients. We know that um, in a sense we're helping to that, right? We're, I work for a dental office and our main goal is to minimize how many patients go to emergency rooms, right? So if we can help a patient that it's in pain, um, uh, with a dental pain, right, that it has a, a broken tooth or, or something like that, that we can help that patient in our practice and prevent them to go to an emergency room that is full with patients that need it, right? They're, they have the coronavirus, and those, those people can be infected in the emergency room. So we're at the same time trying to stop it so we're we're just trying to do our best and and my scenario right um i know for a fact that she already explained that she has a condition and and it's something that worries me and i'm you know i have a lot of anxiety with that i'm taking my measurements like you know temperature. taking my temperature every day um i don't get inside of the house like i basically get naked in the backyard of my house <laughs> before i walked into the house um, leave my clothes in the in the washer um, to make sure that I don't bring anything home. And as soon as I walked in, I don't touch anyone until I take a shower. Um, I disinfect my car. I've been a little bit paranoid and, and in that sense um, because I, I have a duty and I have a, a, a job to, to do, right, to also help with this situation. But at the same time, it's, it's just stressful and it's, it's um, you know, takes a, a toll on you knowing that you're getting exposed every day when, when you're out there. I have a duty. That's very powerful. That's very powerful. Yeah. I, have a, I have a duty. Listen, uh, thank you. Thank you for what you're doing because, yeah, I mean, <laughs> people have dental emergencies. People have pet emergencies. And, and, and then, of course, people have the human emergencies. So uh, somebody wrote, the love he has for his wife is beautiful. Aww. <laughs> He's the best. <laughs> where are you both? Where are you? Where are you both from? We're both from Morovis. It's in the center of the Morovis. Island. Yeah, Morovis. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I haven't been to Morovis, but I hope to get there. Yeah, Thank you're you. welcome. Call anytime, let me know. <laughs> oh, I also wanted to say that my sister got fired today from her um, hotel job in Honolulu, Hawaii. Did she? So, really? Yeah, and she's is out she, there by herself. Is she on here? I'd love to bring her in. Can we get her on here? I'd have to ask her. 
because somebody was actually asking last night, can we talk to somebody from Hawaii? We haven't heard from anybody from Hawaii. So yeah, I'll uh, ask her to get on. Um, after I get off, I'll ask her to, to get great. on. She, well, she should be available because she doesn't have a job now. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, nice, nice to meet you both. Thank Bye, you. David. Thank you for what you do. Thank you, love. Good night. Bye. Bye. I have a duty. I have a lot of respect for someone who takes his job that seriously, and especially, especially when it's, you know, caring, right? Because you don't think of a dental emergency until you have one, and you're like, uh, I need help right now. I can't wait. I cannot wait. Okay. Let's see. I'm a chemistry student in Puerto Rico, unable to finish my undergraduate research because of the quarantine, I work in water pollution. <sighs> Hi. Well, hello. What is your name? My name is Karina. Okay. So you work in water pollution. That's yeah. what you're studying. Yeah. Right now I'm doing an undergraduate research. I work with microplastics. Yes. Um, I kind of try to figure out how much microplastics are in the beaches in Puerto Rico. And due to the quarantine, well, I haven't been able to do any of my research. So I'm just here in my home studying um, from, you know, online classes. It started today, actually. I'm from Universidad Angel Mendez. Um, so, yeah, it's been pretty devastating, kind of, that I'm not able to do my work. What municipality do you live in? I live in Juncos, um, but I study in Gurao. Okay, okay. I'm from here. Are your school leaders going to be flexible and understand that you haven't been able to do research, so you may not be able to turn in what's needed? Class. Yeah. Well, right now, what we're doing is my regular classes, um, they're going on, you know, regularly. But uh, my research class, we since we can't go out to the field, we're just, you know, connecting via, like, uh, video chats and stuff like that. And we just talk about other people's, like, previous research and just stayed informed, but it's not really, you know, compatible to what we actually are supposed to be doing. Mm. How are you doing mentally? I'm doing great, I think, you know, since Maria, Maria was a big bummer. I feel like, you know, this is kind of like a little size Maria in a way, but mm. we have power, we have, like, you know, water, we have food, mm -hmm. we have communication. So I guess that's a big, the better difference to the what we had i hear you loud and clear thank, <laughs> thank you for joining us thank you thank you for all you've done for puerto rico it's really funny to see that most of the people coming on here are from puerto rico <laughs> lots of puerto ricans yeah lots of puerto we really we, we really are appreciated for all you've done for our country i thank you <laughs> thank you thank have you a one, have a wonderful night you too all right good night good night all right so look, the Instagram police are coming for us at the top of the hour. And the Instagram police don't give you a break. When you hit that hour mark, you out. Hey, David. Well, hello. What is your name? I'm Coleman Montgomery. I mean, you met um, a while back um, during the search for Maddox Rich. Oh, I, rem I remember very well. Yeah, tell, tell everyone where you are. I'm in North Carolina, um, Gastonia, North Carolina, um, in a small town outside of Gastonia. Gastonia. Okay. So uh, tell me about your new normal. Um, so a lot of things haven't changed. Um, people are still out doing their everyday life, um, which, you know, you see in other cities, they're, you know, on complete lockdown and our governor hasn't. Uh, started a lockdown or, you know, going into uh, like a shelter in place type thing. Um, but, you know, we are where we are now. You know, there's a lot of stores starting to finally shut down uh, to prevent more people from coming in. Uh, school is now closed until May 15th. Um, so it's just everything's starting to trickle down finally. And I've seen a lot of less people on the roads now. Um, and I finally told myself, OK, it's time to stay in for a while. So you're going to stay in. You're going to be serious about that, right? Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I'm out and I do like a lot of news stuff. So um, between covering press conferences and stuff. So I think we're there. I'm hoping they're going to start doing them virtually. 
uh, so we can cover them from home because just today we had a, a huge press conference and we had over 60 people in one room and you know there's tons of germs being spread uh, so one of the reporters was like hey it's time to let's let's make this real let's start following you Absolutely. Know, and you can contribute to advocating for that because a lot of a lot of leaders on the island of Puerto Rico they're only doing you know virtual press conferences uh, the governor of New York is doing press conferences but in the press conference everyone is sitting six feet apart so uh, I agree I agree yes yeah. yeah and so we also so somebody someone said something about that and we've had just in my county we've only had four cases but in Mecklenburg County I was just on Twitter they've had a hundred and six cases and that's over a third of what there is for the entire state. Mm. So, Mecklenburg County includes what city? Uh, Charlotte. Charlotte, right, right. Uh, well, I'm sure glad you joined us to give us a little bit of, of insight from North Carolina. Thank you so much, David. You're welcome. Nice to see you again. Nice to see you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, so listen, we got four minutes. Four minutes before the Instagram police come to get us. Four minutes, three minutes now. Mm -mm -mm. Nashville. Do I speak Spanish? No, I do not speak Spanish. I wish I spoke Spanish. Uh, Paddington is sleeping. He's had his dinner. We're going to go out for a potty break. Uh, Daddy has not had dinner. So, okay, so here we go. Let's see. So we have about two minutes. Hi. Hi, you got two minutes for the Instagram police come for us. Okay, so my name is Laura. I live in Florida. I work from home, so I'm good. I'm going with my what, puppy. <laughs> what's your new normal like? I work in the travel industry, so it's just a lot of cancellations, but still people is booking vacations. I think we lost her. Ooh, I'm here. We lost. We lost you. I'm You're here. back. So you said people are still booking vacations. Yep, a lot okay, of that, vacations. That's good. That's interesting. Yeah, they see like let's say for May, they're booking a lot. For June, they're booking a lot, and it's surprisingly. It's that's surprising. really interesting. So people yeah. are hopeful that things will clear up and they'll be. <laughs> My boyfriend is surprised that he, I'm talking to you. Oh. <laughs> He's like, who the heck you talking yeah, to? Yeah, he's actually um, on the car industry. I'm surprised that he's still working. In the car industry? Yep. Right, because who's, buy who's buying cars right now? People are buying cars. We're in Florida. So they are saying that they are indispensable for the community. So that's why they're not closing. But it's new normal. <laughs> it is a new normal. Indeed. Yeah. Well, uh, I hadn't thought about that. And, and that, that's an interesting part of this story is that people are hopeful enough to continue booking trips, not so mm -hmm. paralyzed that they've put off stuff like that. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, I thank you. I thank you for joining in. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you. I'm, I'm even like nervous because I was so excited to meet you. <laughs> well, I'm glad we met. Thank you. Have a good night. Yes, well. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we are hitting the top of the hour. I'm going to get off and then come right back on. So I'll sign off now and be back on in five minutes. And we are back. And I have a guest. Let's see how long this lasts. We'll wait for folks to get on and then we'll start again. Okay, Let folks get on and we will get going. So it is 9-11 on Monday night. And let's go ahead and start.
Oop, sorry, backwards. <laughs> hey, David. Hello, what is your name? My name is Gordon. Hi, Gordon. Where are you in the world? I'm actually in New Orleans, Louisiana. My home state. Oh, really? I am, I am from Lafayette, Louisiana, which is two hours to the west of where you are. Nice. So, we can't um, see right. you very well. Oh, sorry. Hey. Sorry about that. Okay. So tell us right what now, you normal. You did a post this morning where you were talking about how many people have uh, passed away in Louisiana and got the cases and everything. It is now up to 1,000, almost 1,200 people have the case in Louisiana. And 30? No, 40 dead total. 40 dead total, and uh, 34 of them are in New Orleans alone. Wow, so they've now surpassed... Uh, over half the cases. Over half the cases are here in New, New Orleans. Right. Well, fun. Wow. I did not I did not know that. I had not gotten that update. Wow. Yeah, I sent you the to your email and your Facebook and Instagram messages about all that as soon as we got the notice. I've been sending it over to you. That way you were keeping up with everything that's going on here. We are under mandated uh, lockdown, basically stay home. And my wife has actually been here in here since the 7th of uh, this month. And she's starting to go a little stir crazy because she is type two, di type two diabetic. And she heard that it does, especially those who are immune to immunocompromised so she's taking every precautions as soon as we walk in the door we got the sanitizer wipes we got let's see I think we're about ready to build an out outdoor shower now why are y'all walking out the door what's that why are y'all walking out the door because she has to go like I have to go get her medications and we have to get food supplies still toilet paper forget it they don't have any I went to two different stores today looking for toilet paper. Can't find anything. Really? Yeah. yeah ba shelves are bare. And uh, went to actually Win Dixie here, and ninety percent of the food was gone. I mean, where you can normally get the hot dogs and everything cheap, they had nothing. It was bare walls. I even video chatted with my wife when I go out to get the supplies so she can see. She goes, what in the world? <laughs> Are you having a hard time hearing me? Uh, I think it's my phone. Well, no, I think it may be mine. Let me see if I can change that. Hold on just one second. All right. <laughs> that loan package at the end. I did. Man, he was asking questions about that. She may have to get on. About what? You'll get on with me. No. He was asking some questions about the amino compromise. Mm -hmm. That's what we were talking about. Oh, would you want to know why? He was asking some questions. Oh. What the fuck? Well, I don't know where my headphones are, so. Uh, uh oh. By the way, David. Yes. This, this is my wife, Nikki. Hi. Hi, Nikki. She's the one that is uh, actually, uh, I was saying, type 2 diabetes, and she found out about it. So she's been basically in the house since the 7th. Plus, I'm an al allergy-induced asthmatic, and everything is in bloom here on top of it. So I just went, that and I saw on the 7th, I saw an almost fist fight over the last box of hand sanitizer at Dollar Tree, and I went, nope, people scare me more than the virus right now. <laughs> Keep yourself inside. I <laughs> have been. I have been. I'm going crazy at this point. Good. But. <laughs> good, 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 good. All right, There's a couple of ones. Thank you all for giving us an update from New Orleans. Not a problem. Have a wonderful you night. You too. Thank you for giving us all the updates. You are welcome. Have a good one. Okay, so the sound is good. We're good with the sound. I don't need to change the sound, right? We're good with the sound. Good with the sound. Hello. Hi, David. Hi. Hi.
We talked again. Before. Mm -hmm. You got we have, You have an update? I have a question for you. What's your question? When does your self quarantine end? It ended uh, yesterday, but I am choosing not to leave. So. <laughs> I was going to ask you once you go back to work, what happens to the town hall? Oh, so the town hall, the town hall will not will not stop. So the town hall is is being done obviously on my own time. So it will uh, continue. That's not going to stop. And I am choosing not to leave. And I really appreciate my company. Do I have a delay as I'm talking? Uh, no, not on my end. Okay, my company is telling us if you don't feel comfortable leaving your home, don't leave your home. And you know, you know what it is for me. It feels a little silly for me to sit here and tell you guys to stay home based on the guidance of the officials and then to leave my home. Now, now listen, do we, do we go to places where people are asked to not be? Yes, hurricanes, tornadoes, volcanoes, all that kind of stuff, okay? So yes, we do go, but this feels different, right? Hi, David. Hey, how are you? I'm good, good, how are nice. you? Nice to see you again. This feels different. How's Paddington? So, Padding, Paddington's actually good. He, he saw this ball, and I, I should have not done this because now he's all amped up again. Um, uh, sorry anyway, to interrupt. But anyway, I don't want, I don't want to go out. It's a, it's a personal preference, and they're allowing me to go live inside my home, and I appreciate that. And my company is being overly cautious, I think, for good reason. Listen, I have a question, one more question for you. I'm listening. And this is just curiosity. I had surgery of my sinuses back in November, and I hold on to everything. And this was used at the hospital, and I was instructed to use it for seven days later. And I saw it in my medicine cabinet, and it made me wonder if this could help in any way. Um... It's called Noxin, and it says that it kills 99.99% .99 of germs and avoids the risk of infection. And what you do is you put it on a Q-tip on the outside of your nostrils and breathe in. It smells like oranges. And I was like, wait, this travels in through your nose. Hmm. So can you look into it with nurses look, or anybody? Here's, in here, here, here's the thing. When it comes to that kind of stuff, I stay away from the speculation and I stick to what is working. So there's some conversation now about anti-malaria medication and other stuff uh, that the president is talking about. Other people, medical experts are cautioning, saying, hey, you guys should not get too excited about that. So I, that, is, that is not my wheelhouse. It's not something that I, I would, I would say watch for what the doctors are saying and listen when i get information about what the doctors are saying about it i will share it but in terms of saying whether that's a good idea or saying people should try that i don't do that i don't want to give false hope i don't want to give confusion any of that so um nice nice to see you again thank you for weighing in and thank, thank, you. Thank, you for the, thank you for the questions give pat and a kiss for me okay love thanks good night mm -hmm. Okay, so listen, so some people are some people are saying that there's a delay. So here's what I'll do. I'll sign off and then come right back on with a different phone. Okay, come right back. Okay, and we are back. Hopefully there is no delay. I'll give everybody a chance to get back on. Okay, does this seem to be better? No delay here. Hi, Jess. No delay. We think we're good. Everything works. Yes, okay. No delay. No delay, Paddington. Do not be putting that in your mouth. No, 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 no. That is not for Paddington. That is not for Paddington. That is not for Paddington. Hi. Hi. What is your name? Crystal. Hi, Crystal. Where are you Hi. in the world? I am in Woodbridge, New Jersey. Okay. And what is your new normal? 
Uh, new normal, you know, I am fortunate enough to be able to work from home. So mm-hmm. I am one of those who um, have been able to maintain job status. And um, it also consists of having okay. two, uh, two kids at home full time. Okay. Um, one of which um, is in eighth grade. She's supposed to graduate uh, eighth grade this year. Yeah. Um, she started virtual learning last week. Mm-hmm. Um, during a time where we thought it would just be two weeks at best. Um, but I think we're hearing rumors that it will most likely be a lot longer than that, which is something that I think everyone has heard at some point in time. I also have a three-year-old. Um, and since the daycares are closed, I have her full time now. Um, my fiance is a sanitation worker, so he's working full time, which is great. Someone's got to get that garbage. Um, but it has been pretty scary um, the past week or so. I live in an area in Middlesex County um, that has seen in, an increase of um, positives. I actually reside directly across the street from a nursing home who currently have at least 10 patients right now. 10 positive patients. 10 positive patients. And I believe that they're still being tested. And you Others said, are being tested. You said that's across the street? Yeah, literally out this window right across the street. <laughs> I have 10 oh. patients there. Are you staying indoors? Yeah. Yeah, for the most part, um, I sit, my house sits at the rear of the uh, facility. So I see a lot of the, um, um, the deliveries. I also see the ambulances as they're taking patients in and out, um, or residents, I should say. Um, and I, uh, we were notified by the mayor a few days ago. Uh, in the beginning, they weren't really addressing like, um, certain residences or places where they had um, confirmed positives. But uh, a couple of days ago, they actually announced that the retire- uh, the nursing home by me was in fact um, found to be, had at some point six positives. Now we're up to 10. Yeah. Ooh, wow, that's scary. Um, yeah, a little bit. Um, well. Yeah, so okay. that's the new norm. I'm also trying to reschedule my wedding, which was supposed to happen in three months in Puerto Rico. Oh. Yeah. So we're working with the local vendors out there to try and come up with an alternative at this point in time. I don't anticipate that we're going to be there in June. I've heard from other people like you who are having <laughs> delays. Some people yeah. are going like, what, what are you doing on the couch? <laughs> Step padding. This, 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 yes, this is the bit. Look at it. Get off the couch. <laughs> Paddington. I'm going. I'm telling you, one of us. No, listen. it's okay. Here, here, here's. There's that. Oh. That's happening right now too. <laughs> well, if, at the rate this is going, the couch will be his too at some point. Yeah, it's that's the new norm. <laughs> I'm being overrun by my dog. Here you go. But um, yeah, so that's that's the new norm here in, in, in Woodbridge, New Jersey, I should say. Yeah. Well, thank you for weighing in. And um, the wedding can happen. Uh, you know, what's important is that you and your family and your fiance stay safe. Uh, Absolutely. Listen, thank God for people who are still working right now and doing the essential things like picking up the trash. Yep. That's an essential go. service to all of us. So. There you go. Um, well, thank you so much. I hope that you stay well, be safe. I know you're, you know, doing the right thing and, and choosing to stay indoors um, and limiting yourself. Um, so I appreciate that. Thank you, love. Thank you very much. Thank awesome. you. Do you mind if I take a quick pic? Because I don't think anyone's ever going to believe that I was talking to Not at Sir all. David. <laughs> and I got a, uh, I got some sort of, I got my daughter in the background, so she'll be happy. <laughs> Have a good night. You too, love. Bye-bye. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye. So somebody said, does Paddington have a Kong toy? He does have a Kong toy. I actually use it to give him peanut butter. Um, and he had some peanut butter. I usually put the peanut butter in the cooker. He's trying to get a blanket, but I think he's going to start eating that blanket and tearing it apart. Um I put the peanut butter in the Kong, and that's what I used to brush him because he don't like to be brushed. I mean, he, he's, he's pretty good about it, but, you know, he'll try and get away. But the peanut butter distracts him. 
So it's very helpful. And what what happened to being what happened to just chilling out? It's nine thirty. Hey. Hello. There he is. What is your name? Gamo, David. I was talking to you the other day. It was actually very dark, so you didn't see my face. That's right. Gamo in New Jersey, right? No, Boston, Massachusetts. Boston, but you work at the supermarket. I do. You're right. You remember you're 19, that. You're 19. Yep, that I am. Still 19 as and of. I was, and I was very impressed with you. Do you have an update for us? Um, I mean, sure, yeah. Um, I am on, myself at least, I'm on leave, I guess, at the store. Came in today, told them about my grandmother living with me. It's very hard to avoid her, so I don't really want to go into work knowing I could possibly bring something in the house they thankfully completely understood so i took a leave of absence and that is a huge relief honestly i called in i thought i was gonna get fired or something but thankfully i got the job still i'm just gonna be here at the home watching over the family while all this stuff kind of goes over um but i wanted to talk to you about something uh very very um in my opinion very alarming i don't know if you've heard of um mayor pam triolo and what uh, was going on in Florida, this council meeting she had. Have you heard about that? Okay, well, I'm going to brief you in really quickly. So basically, apparently, from what I'm hearing, Mayor Pam Triolo literally, or I'm not, not her herself, I'm not really sure, this is just a... Time, time out, time out, time out, time out. Yep. When you say I'm hearing, where are you hearing this from? Um... Well, it's a whole, it's actually a video on YouTube, actually. Okay, so here, here's, here's, here's the thing. I just want to be careful because remember, I only stick to firsthand accounts of stuff, not yeah, I heard course. it from something like that. So I want to, I want to, I want to, if it's something you know firsthand, great. If it's a report, but I, I just want to be very careful that we're not yeah, of course. introducing information that is second or third hand that can't be confirmed and might, might worry people. Yeah, of course. Well, this was a, a video from the official I, channel of um, Palm. I forgot what the channel is called, but it was, they are official. And it was actually a, okay. a, a commission meeting that got actually pretty okay. um, Got like into kind of a yelling match between Mayor Pam Triolo and Commissioner Omari Hardy. I wrote it down. Just let me so look. Let me look this up. Let me, let me look it up with Go you. Go ahead. Yep. It. Of course. Paddington. Palm Beach County. See, people are saying it in the in the comment section. Palm Beach County. They were having an argument. Paddington. Um, basically, people got paid and they charged people bills the day before they put things on lockdown and they suspended um, payments. So pretty much what I'm hearing is that people are being are left without money because they were paying their light bills. And now they don't really have money to pay for other things. Groceries. What should I, what should I Google? I'm not seeing it. What should um, I Google? No, search it up on YouTube. Um, search up Mayor Pam Triolo, Commissioner Omari Hardy. Um, will I? Will this end the call if I go onto YouTube real quick? Or um, it may. Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm not seeing anything. Anyway, what was the issue? Oh, hello? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. Um, basically, as I was saying, yeah, it's um Palm Beach, Florida, coronavirus on YouTube. That's what the title is called. Palm Beach, Palm Florida, Beach. coronavirus. Palm Beach, Florida, coronavirus. Yes. Commission meeting turns ugly. That's what it's called. Commission. I wanted you to... Uh, Pay like put an eye to that just to see what you thought about it, um, because it was actually it's actually in my opinion it's um very upsetting that um, okay I see I see it here so yep. uh, I'm looking at the so okay Paddington yeah you can give it a quick look and see the for coronavirus yourself. just isn't causing anxiety and frustration among residents Thursday nights uh, this is according to the Palm Beach Post. The city commission turned into a screaming match, name calling, uh -huh. finger pointing between the commissioner and the mayor. All right, it's playing. Hold on. Go right ahead. Yeah, go right ahead. Take your time. Well, actually, wait, wait a minute. I don't see the video. Does it, is the video on here? Where is the video? First of 
investigation into Nicholson, which was leaked to the media in early 2015. Yeah, I don't. Let me go see if I click videos. Oh, this should be it. Three days ago. Yeah, well. Okay. This it's um floating all over like Facebook and YouTube and stuff like that. I um, a friend of mine told me about it a couple of days ago. I just now this morning saw it for myself, and it was um it was pretty crazy. It was really crazy. I'm not gonna lie. Um, okay, I'm, I'm watching. All right, you go right ahead. I just want to talk about it real quickly. It's not playing the right video. Let me just read what it says. After a tension-filled meeting of two hours, they became engaged in a heated verbal argument that mm -hmm. ended with staffers escorting them out. Hardy at, oh, as a matter of fact, sorry to interrupt you. I actually posted the video on my stories. If anybody wants to see it there, I actually have it posted on my stories. Um, Hardy accused. What is what? what is basically, to, to make a long story short, like I was saying, um, people got their paychecks and they made people pretty much pay light bills, water bills, electric bills before turning, turn, suspending the payments. So they pretty much took people's paychecks and afterwards suspended payments for the coming months, effectively leaving the people that paid for paychecks without barely little money. And um, Omari Hardy, he brought it up and he was sharing how he felt like that was very wrong for the mayor to do because they're but I'm, not under, well, I'm not understanding what do you mean they took people's paychecks and then what well they didn't take it um people people were paying for like light bills and water bills right um like they do monthly so um they made people pay for their water bills their electric bills with the last check that they have gotten the most recent ones and then after they had paid for those water electric bills they're um, suspending uh, the future payments. They're suspending future payments so people don't have to pay for that. But the problem there lies that they have already took in the money that people are going to very desperately need in a couple weeks' time. That is what got very upset. I see. Yeah, I'm reading some of it now. Yeah. Interesting. Um, I wanted to know if you knew about it because it was a very, very interesting story in terms I of like how I didn't know, people I didn't know about it until you told me. Yeah, no, it's it's crazy to me how they are, are doing your, that. What's they your reaction to it? Honestly, it's it's very disgusting. It's very disgusting because like Omari Hardy himself stated very directly. There are people that are going to die because of this type of stuff. There are going to be people that are going to be suffering without the money. And there go everybody's going through this pandemic. People are suffering. People are getting sick. And especially in Florida, there's a lot of people that are really not listening. So it's getting very out of hand very quickly in Florida. He's, he said that Omari Hardy stated to Mayor Pam Triolo that they could have had this uh, meeting Weeks ago, they could have shut down beaches, hotels, weeks, weeks beforehand, stuff like that. And he even he, he stated himself before um, the video I watched ended that Mayor Pam Triolo has failed to act as a leader in this time of desperate need for one. And it's it's just it's all in the video. It's it's really I'll very well it. said by Omari Hardy himself. I'll it's really it. shocking just to see that um, the mayor of of this um state or i think that's how yeah the mayor pam triolo is doing that town. to the citizens of the city of palm beach i will uh I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna oh actually it's not so it's lake worth beach that's the name of the lake city. work okay okay lake yeah my apologies i wasn't too sure no no it's exactly. fine it's fine i'm gonna go i'm gonna go watch it now especially yeah i um i definitely wanted i just honestly wanted to see what you thought about it see if you could give that some attention because that is a very interesting thing that hopefully will not be let slide because that's very it's very messed up that they did that they they made people pay for the bills like the electric bills water bills and then after they did that they decided to suspend those bills mm. but they're not giving people refunds for the bills they already paid so that's why omari hardy was very upset at the subject
I it hear was you. Very, it was, I'm going to go, go back and watch it. Of course, yeah. Nah, and it, it, it was it was very um very upsetting, especially considering the fact they were actually not going to let him talk about it. He was going to bring it up. The reason it turned into a screaming match was because they did not let him talk about it in the first place. He was respectful, and he was going to bring it up in a manner where they would just be there having a civil conversation. But due to the fact that um, Mayor Pam Triolo and company, they kind of were like, you know, oh, I mean, this is this has already really been talked about. Commissioner Omari Hardy, he definitely has something to say about it. And yeah, I just wanted to, I just wanted to bring that light to to you because you know all this all this type of information. You are a reporter. This is all very important to you to get out to the people. You know. I'm going. I'm going to watch it, brother. I'm going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, definitely. Well, give it a watch. It's very. It's crazy. It's crazy. Um, like I said, I have it um screen recorded on my story, just in case you can't really find it anywhere else. Um, so it's all there. It's all there, and the the proof is in the pudding. And it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Crazy times right now. Crazy times. You're right. Uh, all right. Thanks for thanks for bringing it to my attention. Of I will course. Also watch the video. All right, David. You stay safe, man. You keep doing what you do, guy. And I will hopefully see you once again in another couple of days for another town hall. Good. Hey, listen, I'm really glad that you were given approval to get off. And I know your family's going to be well taken care of with you at home. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. I'm, I'm, right. I feel very I feel very at ease knowing that I'll be here 24-7 to watch them and stuff like that, you know. That's big man things, big man things. I got to be grown one day, right? One day, brother, one day. But all right, David, you have a good um, evening, and you keep talking to these beautiful people, man. You have a good one. You too, man. Bye-bye. All right, let's see. Uh, it's going good. I do not see you. It still says connecting. So you don't see me. Hmm. You see me. We can't see you. Let me. I think there's too many people on Instagram. That's what happens. Let's see if this works. Hey, David. Good evening. What Good is evening. Your, what is your name? Alberto Martinez. And where are you in the world? I am in Kissimmee, Florida. I am from Puerto Rico. Okay. So um, I'm here with my daughter, Andrea. Hi, Andrea. Hello. Hello. <laughs> tell, me, tell me about you guys' new normal in Kissimmee. So what we're basically doing, like, now we're like drawing she's like uh drawing stuff coloring she's now doing more uh online studies today we receive uh tablets from the school so she's gonna start taking formally online classes i think it's gonna start uh wednesday good so maybe they say that maybe in april 25th they're gonna go back to school but that's you know tentative so they were saying that probably she's going to end up the school year at home. Let me ask you what you have talked to her about, because I've wondered how parents are having the conversation. Um, are you allowing her to ask you? Are you bringing it up? Well, we are, we got her very involved. She's even sitting with us watching the news. Okay. So, because we wanted her to you know, to understand how serious is that this virus. Yeah. Because she was on the spring break week last week and she had some plans of going to meet with friends and family, but we were have to be limited to that because of the virus. Mm -hmm. So we explained to her, uh, you know, this is what is happening. This is how it gets contagious. So we are, we're going to have to limit our going out, you know, and, and try to be distanced from, from each other. 
and she's you know she understood at the beginning was some anxiety you know and uh, but but now she's is more more relaxed and now now i understand why why we're stay we're staying in the in the house and it's it it's because for for our own it's it's for your own good yeah what do you what do you do you have any questions andrea about it? like have you asked your parents any questions about it well not yet but i i have a question of when do you think we're going to return to the the schools and jobs yeah that's a good question and you know what the reality is no one has an answer yet about when people are going to go back to their jobs and the schools so what it is is it's a it's a day by day situation and so by this time next week we might have an answer but as of as of tonight we don't have an answer okay yeah so but sometimes not having an answer is the answer you know and so we have to we have to be honest about what the situation is and then of course when it changes then we let everybody know Yeah, you're very well spoken. Thank you. You're you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh you know, it's it's been a it's been a joy to uh to see her and hear from her and just to get a little slice of life from you guys. I guess my only last question is uh what's what's the deal with your job? Are you working from home? What are you doing? No, I am currently unemployed. Okay. And I had a couple of uh jobs, you know, interviews lined up, but I haven't heard anything. I I am guessing that everything is going to be put on hold. You know, so right now I'm, you know, keep look keeping looking and receiving uh unemployment. So that's basically what I what I've been doing. I've been doing. And what do what kind of job are you trying to get? Well, uh my my occupation is a field service technician. Okay. I used to work for a uh printer company, a big printer company. So that's what I uh, I was looking also I was doing uh customer support technical support oh, from home but we got laid off in January that was my 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 last job they they moved the job overseas uh so mm -hmm. outside the US and when did you move from Puerto Rico to Florida in 2012 2012 so you've been there quite a while well before yes. Maria yes yes well before Maria and Since since Maria is that I know you I, I, you were the only person that I was able to follow what is what was happening there I lost communication with my family and <laughs> because of because of what you're reporting I was more you know uh at ease getting to know what was happening there well I'm But, glad I'm glad we could bring the information to you uh listen yeah. I thank you I thank you for joining us tonight and sharing a, a part of your story hey Before I leave, I have one concern here in Kissimmee. Okay. I was uh, I took a bike ride this morning and I still okay. see a lot of traffic, you know, a, a lot of people on the streets. And the curfew yep. here is from 11 p.m. to 5 a.m. But uh, I don't know if that's going to be, you know, too effective. I mean, because usually the people is more at home at night, right? And Yeah. So I but I see too much this is lighter the traffic but not like other states or other images that have been seen on the on the social network listen that it's a, it's a good time to remind everybody social responsibility is key here we're yeah. all counting on everybody else doing their part too can the police arrest you in some places they can in Puerto Rico they can yeah. in New York they can in California they can Uh in Florida the governor is not issuing a statewide uh ban and he said tonight he's not doing it because you know a lot of the counties don't have it the reality is they don't know whether they actually have it because they're not doing widespread testing um but the governor's not doing a statewide ban as of right now so uh it's unfortunate that people are out and about but the key is to keep your family indoors because those yeah. people who are out and about mingling could be carriers of it could be getting it from other people that's the reality yeah that's the reality so all right so you have a you have a good night and thank you for joining us all right andrea say goodbye bye bye andrea have a good night
Okay. And I have one question. I'm listening. Um, uh, how will other people know that the, what other people that are not listening to the news, how will they know that to stay inside of our house? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, that's why I always say it's a good idea for people to watch the news so that they know what's going on in their community. Uh, but, you know, we have social media like you are, you and I are talking on Instagram right now. So um, for people who may follow me on Instagram, they would see reporting. Or for people who may follow the local news station where you are in Florida, they would see the news. Or you can read the newspaper. Or what happens a lot of times is people talk to each other. Like your dad might talk to somebody else who will say, hey, did you know there's this order that you should – that's how – news and information gets out. But I want you to know that what's really important is that we not spread news that is inaccurate. We only want to spread important information that is truthful. Because as you can see, the news affects our lives. It affects your lives, it, it, your life. It affects whether you go to school and it affects my life. So we want to be very truthful about how we spread the news. Does that make sense? Yes. Good. Does that answer your question? Yes. Good. Show, him your, show him your guitar. This is what it is so far. Ah, uh, that is nice. That is well done. That's better than me, Missy. I'm not the best drawer. You're pretty good. Pretty good. You need to keep on practicing. <laughs> I, that's some good advice. You need to keep on practicing. That's some good advice. Well, you have you have a good night. Thank you. You okay. too. You too. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay. okay, somebody was talking about the oil field industry. Um, I think it was somebody with the last name Thibodeau, which is a common name where I'm from. So I'd like to talk about the oil field. So if that person is still here, just leave a comment just saying, um, this is me, and I'm happy to talk to you about the oil field. Wait and see if we can bring that person in. See if I can bring in the gentleman earlier who we tried to get, but it wasn't working. Hi there, it is still not working. Why don't you do this? Why don't you delete your app, reinstall it, and try again? Oh, <laughs> listen, listen, don't worry about topping it. Everybody's equal. So uh, if you want to join in, I would just ask you to do that. So. Well, thank you very much. People. Yeah, they're just watching me sit here um, and talk, but they can't hear what you're saying. If you want to leave a comment, then we can we can engage that way if you want. Oh, I think he hung up. There's a gentleman who is, okay, so Katie, I cannot bring you in for whatever reason. I don't know if your account is private and maybe that's preventing it. Uh, so a couple of best practices rules that I've learned, thanks to all of you who have been weighing in and helping, is that if your account is private, I don't think I'll be able to bring you in. And then for some people, you actually have to delete the app and reinstall it um, in order to get that to work. So uh, I'd love to get you guys in, but I, that's just one of the hiccups of the system, and I am dependent on the platform to work. Okay, let's see. Hello. Hello. How are you? I am well. What is your name? My name is Lizette Torres. Hello, Lizette. Where are you in the world? I am in Pensacola, New Jersey. Okay. And what is your new normal? 
Well, my new normal is really just trying to stay informed, stay focused, do my part, and stay home. Is that drastically different than usual? Um, for me personally, no, but I can understand how for others it is quite an adjustment. Um, I've been laid off for quite a few months, so it's been my new normal for a long time, but now just trying to stay healthy and stay indoors. And you're doing that? Yes, definitely. Good, good. Anything else you want us to know? Well, I just want to say, uh, give a quick shout out to Vieques, Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. My parents are there. They are. They are. Uh, we are, my father's family is from Vieques. They've, we've been there for many generations. And ironically, I would say in a situation like this, it would concern me that they're so isolated in Vieques and away from uh, health care, away from a, a lot of things that other folks take for granted. But for the first time since in a long time, I'm thankful that they're there because of their isolation. They are even more removed from this situation that we're living and they're elderly. So I never thought of it that way. Yes. And that's what they say. They say, you know, don't worry about us. Uh, we are, we are okay. <laughs> mm. And they were on one of the three cruises that were not allowed to enter Puerto Rico. No way. Yeah. They had to go to Cape Canaveral, be bused to Orlando, and get flown back into Puerto Rico. Ay, ay, ay. Yeah. It was, but they said, hey, we were, it was free food. <laughs> you know, they treated us well, so they didn't complain. <laughs> There's something to be said for that. Well, yes, Ms. Torres, thank, you. thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening. You too. God bless you. Thank you, love. You too. Bye-bye. All right. And thought about that with Vieques. They are very isolated, and you can, do, you can do a lot of social distancing on the island of Vieques. That's for sure. You can do a lot of social distancing. Hi. Hi. Have we talked? No, we have not. We talked. We tried talking this morning, and it. But was you've been trying to get on. Yes. <laughs> well, the time is yours. What is your name? My name is Joandria Mendez. I go by Joe. Okay, Joe. And where are you in the world? I am in Orlando, Florida, right now. Right, right. What is your new normal? My new normal right now is trying to basically stay up to date with everything that's going on and everything that's current and um, just utilizing my resources. I'm an OR nurse. So right now I'm busy canceling lots of elective cases because we are only doing um, urgent or emergent procedures now. So OR for those who don't know is uh, the operating room. Yes. So, you know, uh, the governor of your state has asked that I believe all elective procedures be postponed yes. and or canceled for the time being. And the governors of New York and Florida and Ohio and Michigan and California, I mean, hell, I, for all I know, every governor of every state has done that. But um, so does that mean you're not working? Well, right now, a lot of us are doing what we can to stay active and working. Lots of us are um, canceling cases, like I said, others are working at the main gate doing screenings, other are being floated to other areas. So right now we're trying to stay as active as we possibly can throughout this entire uh, time journey, this that we're going through, um, helping out our, our, our other units, you know, trying to be team players in, in, in this difficult time. Is there a world in which you get called down to help work in the ER? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Yep. We are, we're, we're trained to do a little bit of everything, I suppose. You have, you, are y'all short on masks like most places? Um, we are working with what we can. Um, uh, people who basically need them are the ones that are getting them. For example, you're at the main gate, you're screening, you're wearing masks. If you're in the OR doing a case, you're wearing masks. Um, uh, lots of masks have been, um, basically put away 
were hidden, so to speak, a lot of people are saying, just because um, we want them uh, utilized accordingly. Yeah. And I understand some people might be in a panic and, you know, things like that. Yeah. Are you worried? Um, not worried, um, but I am concerned about people not taking this seriously. Um, I'm not worried about doing my job accordingly. I'm not worried about taking care of patients as I should. I know what I signed up for. I love my job. I find it rewarding. What I find concerning is the exponential growth that has been going on in new cases here in Florida. Um, doing research, for example, I've noticed that we have um, the flights from New York to San Juan, Puerto Rico, are $36. Yet, really? when we, I am Puerto Rican, I have family in the island, yet when earthquakes or Hurricane Maria and people were trying to exit the island to be safer, these prices were thousands of dollars to leave the island. Yet, New York, which is one of the highest states right now that is reporting these cases, you guys are quarantined. You're leaving for $36 to Puerto Rico or any other place. I'm sure it's it's equally inexpensive. Stay put, please. <laughs> Do not travel right now. We need to stop the spread. Traveling right now is not, it's not the choice. Mm -mm. Very, very well said. I'm, I, sure. I'm just concerned about the spread, but not as a nurse. No. I'm sure glad we got you in finally. <laughs> thank you so much for your time and obviously i'm going to fill in the cliche i am going to go ahead and thank you for keeping us communicated us puerto ricans and everyone globally regarding hurricane maria you gave me peace so thank you thank you thank you i want to continue to to do that and yes. and you know hearing you and hearing other people i think is sharing a little bit of peace with everybody who dips in to watch this so thanks yeah. Thanks. Yes, thank you so much. Everyone do your part and please stay in. I can't, but you can. Amen. Thank you. I, I love that. I can't. That should be a hashtag. I can't, but <laughs> I you can't. can. Like for every mm -hmm. first responder, I can't, but you can. But you can. Oh, I love that. I'm going to use that. I can't, but you can. Thank you, love. That's awesome. Thank you so much. Have a good night, David. You too. Bye-bye. I can't, but you can. I'll tell everybody that. I can't, but you can. Hi, Dave. Hello there. Yeah, how you doing? I'm okay. Where are you? Right now, I'm on uh, South Jersey. Okay, are you in a car? No, right now, I'm working right now. Oh, what's your name? Eddie. Eddie, what type of work do you do? I'm a machine operator in a manufacturing company. Okay, so you're still working? Yes, yes, yes. Is your job considered an essential job? Well, so far it's not. So far we stay open until the governor says the opposite. Well, so far we're still working, thank God. In a way, yeah, thank God. Okay. What's your new normal, Eddie? Uh, I don't know. I mean, right now, in, in the way that everything is right now here in Jersey, I mean, everybody, we got the same curfew as Puerto Rico. At 9 o'clock at night, everybody had to stay in the house to... The only time you, you're allowed to go out if you got to go to a store or to go to work and stuff like that. And by the way, I just came back on Friday to Puerto Rico, uh, from Puerto Rico. I was visiting my, my parents, and the same day I got there, the Sunday, that's when the governor uh, issued the, the, uh, the curfew. So, but thank God I was able to, uh, to see my parents, and I mean, I came back. Now, one thing that I was concerning about is that when I got to the airport, it was nobody there checking the like the people's uh, uh, checking everybody like, like the temperature that what they were supposed to do. And... So that's happening now. They're up and running. Okay. And starting tomorrow, all commercial flights to the island can only go through San Juan. That's okay. it. Only good, San good, Juan. Good. And uh, and another good thing is here on my job, since since that started, we got nurses in the gate. Checking the temperature of all the employees, make sure that everything is fine, make sure that everybody's fine. 
So, but it's a but it's a lot of concern in here because right now we it's a lot of uh, employees calling off because of the situation. But I don't know. Hopefully, it's over soon. And I don't know. I don't, it, it's scary, and the way it is right now is scary. I'm I'm glad that the that my daughter is safe. That that's all I care about. That my daughter is safe, and you know. So, well, listen. I'll let you get back to work. But thanks for weighing in. Thank you. No problem. Hey, uh, can I take a picture real quick? You may, of course. Thank you. And thank you, Dave. And, th uh, and God bless you. And thank you for everything that you did from Puerto Rico. For real. Thank you so much. Thank you, Eddie. God bless thank you. you. Good night. God bless you. Bye bye. All right. So let's see. I think we have the lady who wants to talk about the oil industry on. Let's see if this works. It says waiting for Miss Thibodeau. Waiting, waiting, waiting. <laughs> hey! Hello? Sorry, my phone is on a charger up here, so I'm like having to hold it up here. Okay, that's no so, problem. Because I'm so on like 5%. Uh-oh, so your name's Katie? Yes, I went to school with you. At Turlings? St. Leo. Oh, you went to elementary school with me? Yes. Uh, Katie McCormick. Wow. Well, you remember that? Long um, time ago. If I, want, if, I, if I was a liar, I would tell you I do, but I want to be honest with you and tell you that I don't. Okay. I uh, always had long hair, but um, you... You went off to Turlings, and I went off to STM. You went off to St. Thomas More. Yes, so we parted ways then. Well, I'm glad we've reconnected. Um, you you were me. one of the smart kids, and that's why. And, and so we were probably in different classes because I struggle a little more than you. <laughs> well, listen, let's be very clear. I was not a straight-A student. Um, I, I was an average student, so. Uh, I don't know. But you were the kid other kids would cheat off of. <laughs> really? Wow. Yes. You oh, were wow. super smart. Okay. All right. Um, so tell me tell me about your situation because I saw the comment about the oil industry. Yeah, so, so what, what's uh, your situation? So my husband, I mean he still goes to work every day, but um okay. of course you know how the Louisiana oil field is offshore. Yeah, he got laid off there. We moved to West Texas. We went to Odessa and now we're living in San Angelo. And so he's still, his job's not affected at all. Now they don't report every day in the morning at the office. You know, they just go straight to the plants, you know, and they're kind of keeping their distances and stuff. But, you know, they just go and do their job and, you know. So, I mean, I don't think that there's much contact, but um, the new norm is uh, he came home with a kayak today. He's just been spending money. I don't know what it's because we're bored at home. I don't know what's going on. He bought a car online two days ago. Not even joking. They're delivering it next week. Is the man oh, going I'm... through a midlife crisis? I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, what, what, what is really going on? What is really going on? Now, I know. Tell, tell me, are you, so you said y'all are in San Angelo. Where exactly is that? Like dead smack dab in the middle of Texas. Oh, but cool. it's it's towards the bottom of the Permian Basin. Okay, got it. And how long do you guys expect to be there? Um, definitely till our kids graduate from high school. How so, old are your, How old are your kids? <laughs> you sure you want me to list all these ages? Uh oh, this is about <laughs> to get good. I d so uh, there are twenty, twenty two, no, twenty one, nineteen. 18, 15, 14, 14, 13. So we have a set of twins, but um, all the others have graduated, moved out. We're down to the last four. And so we've got a freshman and three eighth graders. You have a 22 year old? Yeah, well, that's my stepson. I've, I've raised my, those kids. But my, do my, my oldest that I birthed is 19. A 19 year old. Yeah, I was pregnant at 18. So that's how that happened. Wow. 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 I know. You've a lot of living, a lot of, a lot of parenting. I'll tell you what, if I'd gone to Turlings, maybe things would have turned out differently for me. Well, listen, listen, you are where you are. And um, 
you got some kids you love and you know, you, 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 you're living, you're surviving. Um, That's right. This is, this is interesting. Can, well, I want to ask you what your, have any of your kids come to you worried about what they're hearing and seeing and no, living they think, they think it's a party. Oh, that they're on vacation right now. They think this is vacation time. <laughs> they're like, it's like pulling teeth to get them to do their schoolwork. But I mean, they're teenagers now. So I yeah. guess that's, you know, they're yeah. in, I mean, eighth and ninth grade. They think it's, they have time. It's a vacation period for them. They love it. They love being home. They love, but it's, it's a headache for me. Because this was my me time, and now my me time is gone. <laughs> so it's frustrating. Big change. Big change. Well, yeah. uh, thanks for weighing in. Wow. Uh, oh, all, the just... way back, all the way back to St. Leo. That's amazing. No, Lafayette, Louisiana. That's right. That's you know, I can't believe you don't remember. So you remember Andre Savoy, Eric Oleski, and those guys? Okay, Eric, I do. Eric, you I do. Eric. And you know why? Because Eric has... Over the course of uh, I don't know the last decade or so, we've kept in touch on Facebook, and really? so that, that's that's cool. that's why I remember. Yeah, yeah. So every year, me and Eric, because we've always had the same birthday, May 11th, we we call each other and like at the strike of midnight, like we send each other a birthday, happy birthday, to see who could beat each other to it, <laughs> to see who could beat him to the punch, the other to the punch. So I I love that. I love Isn't that. that funny? Yeah. Your 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 slight little, little accent makes me miss home. Oh no, I'm a coon ass. I, know. No, I love it. I love well, I love the accent. Oh, uh, one thing real quick. It does. It's not pertaining to the virus or anything. Okay. It's probably something you might want to do for another day, yeah. not tonight. Yeah. Um, it's to do with um this suit that I have going on right now with um the Diocese of Lafayette, the Diocese of Lake Charles with the Catholic Church. I don't know if it's something you'd be interested in wanting to report about, but it needs to be heard. I would like to know what it is. So here's what you can do. You can send me a direct message and then we can take it from there. Okay. All right. Well, um, I did, I sent you one on Facebook, but you never checked it. So, well, I can send you so, so here's, yeah, here's, here's the thing. The Facebook, I get so many messages on Facebook, it's really hard for me to go through them. So mm -hmm. for whatever reason, Instagram tends to be a little easier. So send me one there if you don't mind, but I, okay. I, I'm, I'm interested in uh, what that may be about. It's, it's a crazy story. I I'd mean, like it is, you will I'd, be in awe. I'd like to know. And this is your hometown too. So you yeah. might, we, yeah. I would think that you would want to know. I would like to so. know. Send, send that to me, please. I will. Well, cheers. Okay. You too. <laughs> cheers to you, love. Nice to, nice Salute. to, it was nice nice. To, good seeing you. You too, babe. Have a good night. All right. Take bye care. Bye-bye. Wow. Wow. An elementary school classmate. Wow. Was not expecting that. Wow. Uh, where are we on the Instagram police? Are they coming for us soon? 10, 11 p.m.? How are you doing? I'm well. How are you? I'm just decontaminating right now. I, I, I'm i sorry to interrupt. <laughs> You're fine. What is your name, sir? I'm Jose. Jose, where are you in the world? I'm actually in Georgia right now. Georgia? Okay. Tell us about your new normal. Well, I just got home from work, and uh, the wife has me stripping down in the garage before I enter the house. Smart lady. Uh, due to me working at uh, at the airport, um, we've been kind of quarantined each other now for the past about a week or so, week and a half. So, and Jose, what type of work do you do at the airport? Uh, I work for the government. Okay. So, I, I, by the way, I think Jose, we have one minute left. Okay. So if we get cut off, I'm gonna come right back on, and I will bring you back in. So you work for the government. Can you say any more about what you do? Uh, no. Okay. All right. That's fine. So you're in an area where you're clearly exposed to tons of people, right? Correct. Okay. And it's still mind-boggling how many people are traveling. Yeah, really. Well, do you work at um, 
Hartsfield? Uh, yes. Okay, so the busiest airport in the world. Um, so there's still there's still a whole lot of people traveling, huh? Got a whole lot of people going through. I still don't understand it. Just as I guess one of your other uh, individuals you had on, it's true, you know, they had all these enormous prices during crises um, in Puerto Rico, people trying to get out, you know, get the folks to the mainland, and now you're having tickets that they're giving them away, sure. which you're defeating the purpose of what is going on now. So that's a sad, that is a sad reality because I remember during the earthquake, people reaching out to me and sending me round trip tickets of $1,200. Exactly. I, remember, I remember very, I remember very well. So your new normal is you come home, you decontaminate, the wife lets you inside and. And I, I stay in the room. I stay in the room. My kids, you know, we do air hugs, air kisses, right? That's, we that's the new norm. We can't see you. Point the phone down. There. Yeah. Okay. So air hugs. Yep. Air kisses. Mm -hmm. So it's not, you know, it's. It's a whole change of life. Um, just because I'm afraid to come here and bring something to my family. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that is my biggest fear, especially, you know, when my own, you know, when my wife has autoimmune disease, so I have to take extra steps. She takes extra steps. So there's a lot that, you know, we're trying to do just to take as much precaution as we can. I hear you. Uh, Jose, thank you for weighing in. I'm sorry to catch you when you were uh, <laughs> your decontamination process. No but, problem. But nice, nice to chat with you. Likewise, sir. Have a great day. You too. Good night. So, okay, everyone, we will end on Jose. I've got to go to bed. I've got to be back on television in the morning. So um, I thank you for another productive evening of a town hall journal slash group therapy. <laughs> it's been wonderful. We'll do it again tomorrow. Same time, 8 p.m. is when we'll start. I usually do one in the morning, too. It's kind of whatever time I, I um, have a moment to sit down and do it. But definitely tomorrow night at 8 o'clock again. Okay? Good night.